not you win this thing, you've got to decide how you're going to walk out of here when it's all said and done. Because the game is going to go on. And there's only one rule you're going to need to know about. There's only this moment and the next moment. Every one of those moments is a test that you get to take one time and only one time. So if you see an opening, tear into it. If you get a shot at victory, make damn sure you take it. Seize that moment. That moment is a crossroads where everything you want will collide with everything standing in your way. You've got momentum at your back. Fear and doubt are thundering like a freight train straight at you. And all you got, the only difference between making history and being history, the only thing, the only thing you can count on in any given moment is you. It's you versus them. You versus no. You versus can't. You versus next year, last year, statistics, excuses. It's you versus history. You versus the odds. It's you versus second place. Clock is ticking. Let's see what you've got. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I went to uh, Our Lady Miracles grade school. I got picked on a couple of times from a group of kids, and I've always had that experience where I could leave school and, and I have to defend myself. That also turned over into high school, where after high school you walk out off campus and you might see someone there that you might not like or he might not like you, or you might be talking to his sister or he's talking to your friend or any, there's always like some nonsense that you had to deal with growing up and that definitely made my made me mentally feel that I was always almost like I had to protect myself I had to almost be uh, paranoid you know and, and just be ready never to be a victim so that definitely veered me toward training martial arts I went to Leon M. Goldstein High School, which was at the time called Kingsborough High School, and they changed the name. And then I went to Kingsborough Community College for my nursing degree. And then I went to SUNY Downstate for my bachelor's in nursing. And I also got certified in cardiac uh, cath. So uh, my first my first job ever as a nurse was in the emergency room of Coney Island Hospital, which was it's a city hospital and it comes off of one of the major highways of Brooklyn. So we, I've got to see a lot, of, a lot of different crazy experiences there. And within the first few months, I've seen pretty much everything there is to be seen with the human life and death. So um, there was no surprises after a few months of working there. And it definitely prepared me mentally, I feel like, being able to stay focused in situations that normal average people wouldn't be able to. And as, as a fighter, sometimes the blood and the gore and, and the pain, sometimes it actually, it actually can help uh, seeing that experience at work. So my original training was in a Goju Ryu school around age five or six. At age 10 years old, I went into a, a school called Universal Defense Systems, which was under my original uh, teacher, Ralph Mitchell, with a basis on Jeet Kune Do, kickboxing, uh, under the lines of Savat Muay Thai, uh, he also was a judo black belt, so he did throws, um, and we also even we even did Filipino martial arts. I did Arnis, or also known as Kali, stick fighting, and we did boxing. So it was just like a well-rounded, almost like an MMA program, but MMA wasn't even popular. Uh, when I was a kid, my parents enrolled me in all kinds of sports and all kinds of things. I was so involved in in everything. My my dad enrolled me in soccer. He enrolled me in baseball. We did basketball. 
Um, but I even did hockey. But the one thing that I really enjoyed was one-on-one -on -one combat sports situations. I wasn't the best team player relying on other teammates in a, in a field. Uh, I think it was fun, but I think the, the best feeling was being able out there alone and having only one opponent and having to deal with that. I really enjoyed the competition and I always wanted to test myself. So some of my training partners, we started getting into kickboxing, we started getting into karate tournaments, and then one of my training partners at the time said, hey, there's this thing called UFC and I'm gonna try it. And after he had his first fight and his first few fights, I said, you know what, I'm gonna try it. And after my first fight, I said, I'm hooked. So. I was, I was just influenced by the comp competitive nature of it, the primitive aspect of it, and I, I just enjoyed the, the, the thrill of winning and I, I enjoyed the training. Uh, the experience of the Ultimate Fighter was life changing. Um, I think in 2008, I was like 23 or 24, and here I get from having five pro fights in MMA and I get right, thrown right into the UFC and one reality TV show tearing up the competition and it was just it was an amazing experience and it got me on the map no one ever heard of me before and here I was and making it to the finals in the Ultimate Fighter in the UFC you deal with all kinds of pressures and all kinds of media and hype and people talking all kinds of stuff so you you know, as a fighter, you have to learn how to put that aside and just really believe in yourself. Um, I think that, you know, Dana White at the time and, and a lot of people were just pretty much complimenting my, my stats and they really believed that I could build up a, a great career and they were comparing me to some of the best in the world. You know, I'm not the next George St. Pierre, I've been asked that a number of times, I'm not the next Anderson Silva, I'm the next Philippe Nover and that's who I am. There were so many critics especially if you just start reading deep into the internet. You can read the forums, you can read people's articles, you can read that, you know, they said that I'm like one of the top 10 worst outcomes or, or hype machines that lost or something. I pursued my passion and my dream. So all the people on the internet, you know, all the people, all the critics, they could say what they want, man, but I'm living my life and I'm, I'm doing what I want. I'm gonna actually have a fulfillment in my mind and in my heart of what I can achieve in mixed martial arts. I think in 2010, that was my last fight with them. You know, I, I actually had neck surgery and was thinking about retiring. And after the neck surgery, I started feeling a lot better. I thought to myself, you know, you got one life to live and you might as well do what you love to do. And uh, after healing up, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get back in. So I had a pro tie fight and then I fought in a, in a, a local show and then I fought ring combat. Um, I fought in uh, Bellator also, which is a, another huge promotion, and I just pursued my dreams. But you know, to get thrown out of the UFC and it, it was a, an experience that had to happen because I did lose fights and I really wasn't ready at the time to be in the big leagues, um, and I had to prove myself again. So after winning uh, the title in Ring of Combat and proving myself that I can hang in Bellator, and I'm, uh, I'm definitely a, a, a top-notch fighter now. Now I'm back in. I, 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 I... My mom put me on a plane every summer and I flew down to the Philippines to see the, all the relatives I have there, which it'll probably take me a month just to visit every single one. So I consider myself a Filipino-American and I am well adapted into the Filipino culture. I eat all the Filipino food, I cook all the Filipino food, um, I travel around the Philippines, I've been all over the country. If you look at the Philippines as a, as a country and its history, we've always been in some, in some type of combat situation. Um, in every recent war we've been involved in, we've been conquered by other countries and having to defend ourselves. 300 years, we were conquered by other people and we're finally independent. And here we are and, and we have all this history and now we combat sports is something that a lot of Filipinos can assimilate to. So I'm super excited to be representing the Filipino culture out there. Uh, the 145 division in the UFC is stacked right now. There's a, 
a lot of different talents there, a lot of different personalities. I think the top 10 is uh, changing here and there. Um, but I feel that my next run at the UFC, I want to make an impact on that top of the division. I want to be in the top 10. I feel no other reason why at my age, at 31 years old, should I pursue a fight career unless I want to be in the top of the division. I don't want to be a guy who's a win one, lose one, win one. I want to be in there, win, 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 and prove myself that I belong in the top 10. Uh, well, we're here today at Church Street Boxing. My, uh, my main coach is Jason Stroud. He's my striking coach, and he also is my, my primary guy. And, um, you know, he's, he's a whiz when it comes down to MMA striking. Um, he has champions under him recently, Marcos Goval and Liam McGeary are both Bellator belt holders. David Branch is the current uh, World Series of Fighting uh, champion at 185. One of my primary training partners is Jared Gordon, solid, solid striker, heavy hands, really good wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Another coach of mine is uh, Dave Esposito, and he's out in Hoboken, New Jersey, in Edge Hoboken, which is my wrestling coach. He's worked with guys like Frankie Edgar, who I also train with. Um, he's putting together a solid, solid wrestling program there that's formulated for MMA, and I'm able to get you know the, the cage wrestling, the wrestling with striking, the jiu-jitsu style wrestling, all in, in one, in one uh, gym. And uh, also at Edge Wrestling, I have a stable of, of D1 wrestlers, all kinds of fighters. Uh, Jimmy Hedis, who also fights in the UFC at 145, so I'm more than prepared for this fight. And another coach of mine is uh, Mike Jaramillo, who's uh, an amazing jiu-jitsu uh, coach. He's a black belt under, under John Danaher and Enzo Gracie. And uh, he's been training with uh, George St. Pierre back when he was, when they were both purple belts. So he has a very good uh, jiu-jitsu program that I follow. And those are my three guys right now. And, and I feel like in the last five years, just working with them, my game has increased tremendously. It's an amazing time right now. I'm back in the UFC. Uh, I've been waiting five years to get back in. And not just waiting, but working hard, working my tail off, fighting in other organizations, winning fights, finishing guys, and proving myself that I belong in the best league in the world. Uh, my opponent's name is uh, Yu Chul Nam. They call him the Bulldozer. So it'll be the Filipino Assassin versus the Korean Bulldozer. It's a pretty funny matchup, <laughs> name-wise. But I'm taking the guy super seriously. He marches forward, punching, super heavy hands. It'll be a tough fight. I'm very glad that the UFC set me up with a, a, an opponent that I have to prove myself. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do my do my job and I'm gonna finish him, do some damage, and and I'm definitely gonna win this fight. Maraming salamat sa support ako.